Accounting fraud using the chart of accounts. This is Ken Boyd. So he was sitting in front of me in a full, legit Easter Bunny costume with floppy ears, and no one else seemed to mind. It was Easter Sunday after all. But this heated yoga class would get up to a temperature of 95 degrees or so, so I was wondering if Hoppy the Bunny would pass out. I never got to find out because the bunny left 10 minutes into class, which brings us to fraud, which is defined as wealth intent to deceive. And I don't think the bunny was fooling anyone, maybe some young kids in the lobby. But it seems like we've had a nice run of fraudsters lately, including Sam Bankman Freed. Most accounting fraud includes the theft of assets or some type of earnings manipulation. And in 2015, the source of this story, the SEC reported on a fraud scheme that was far more complex, and this fraud occurred because of huge internal control failures over company assets and accounting records. So there was a senior officer, accounting officer at Molex Japan, which is a Chicago-based company with a Japanese subsidiary. In the late 80s, he began investing the company's excess cash in riskier securities, including substantial trading equities on margin. Margin is investing with borrowed money. And these transactions brought up a host of issues. The first, segregation of duties. No accountant should be involved in investing company assets. Segregation of duties dictates that the record keeper, the accountant, cannot also have custody of the assets, like the checkbook, for example. If an accountant has both of these duties, the company is at risk of fraud, which is exactly what occurred here. An investment policy, all companies should have board-approved investment guidelines that state what we're going to invest in and what we won't. And few companies would authorize security trading on margin as an investment policy. Margin, as I mentioned, means buying securities with borrowed money. The security serves as collateral. If the value of the securities go down, the investors required to deposit more money. It creates can create financial spiral because as securities decline in value, You've got to deposit more money. So with this problem, the accountant decided to take out loans to cover his trading losses. As the SEC explains at the top, he concealed massive trading losses by taking out unauthorized and undisclosed company loans with Japanese banks and brokerage firms, and he used the proceeds to replenish the account balances and do more trading. Again, even more internal control problems, just as the accountant cannot have access to assets, no account should be authorized to sign off on a loan that is handling money that should be seg segregated, separated from the accountant. Loan policy, senior management should not make decisions about any borrowing. The amount, loan details, and purpose of loan should fit the company's borrowing policy. It's got to be a group decision, not an individual. And finally, Loan approval, the first thing a commercial banker wants to know is how will the loan proceeds be used? Why are you borrowing money? And obviously the accountant wasn't truthful as to why they were borrowing money. And this comes to the big point, which is the accountant falsified accounting records and general ledger entries using intentionally, and in italics here, intentionally used, utilized dormant general ledger accounts to conceal the unauthorized and undisclosed trading. And at the peak of his scheme, hard to believe, Molex Japan had accumulated approximately $222 million in unauthorized loan obligations. Dormant general ledger accounts. Manipulation of accounting records and general ledger issues is common in an accounting fraud. And using these dormant accounts brings up an issue that's often ignored, which is, what is an individual general account, general ledger account used for? Everyone's in a hurry. Accounts are under the gun to produce financial statements and auditors, both internal and external auditors, are trying to perform audits efficiently. And along the way, people may not pay attention to the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is a listing of all your accounts. And as you might expect, some accounts get added, deleted, or simply sit dormant and unused. Now, it's a standard accounting practice to remove those dormant accounts they, they're a distraction. They clutter up your accounting reports. It's harder to get through all those account numbers. But a dormant account is a perfect place to park, quote unquote, accounting activity that somebody wants ignored. And if senior management and auditors aren't used to seeing that account, it might fall under the radar for a while. Eventually, though, the balance gets big enough, which is what happened here, and eventually gets noticed. So what was the fallout from all this? No accountant should be involved in signing off an investment activity or loan activity 
and you should pay attention to dormant general ledger accounts and remove them if they aren't being used. So that's food for thought. And for more great content on accounting and finance, you can go to my Substack account here, Accounting Accidentally at Substack.com.